to regardless of affiliation, regardless of purchase behavior, regardless of all that. It's just, hey, here's the facts. Um, you can obviously research and verify them yourself, but here's the facts whether you like them or agree with them. Um, and I do want to just show... Hey, this is Lance McGowan here, and I wanted to give you an update with regards to Gary Young, the founder of Young Living, and what happened to him from an announcement from Young Living's website. And so I'm just going to read that off and then do my own reaction and then give you some information so you can learn more as well. All right, so it says here um, that D. Gary Young, you can kind of see a little bit here, um, the father of modern day essential oil movement. Um, this was published on May 14th, 2018, and it says that he lived from July 11th, 1949 to May 12th, 2018. And it says, D. Gary Young, the undisputed leader of the essential oil movement and founder of Young Living Essential Oils, passed away on May 12th, 2018 in Salt Lake City, Utah, due to complications following a series of strokes. Young spent 35 years studying the benefits and perfecting the extraction of essential oils while building a billion dollar global business designed to share what he deemed the gift of essential oils with millions of people. Described as a modern pioneer, Young was part inventor and part historian. His pursuit of new wellness discoveries was rooted in ancient practices as he attempted to unlock and share the benefits bestowed by herbs, plants, and trees. His research would take him to the remote corners of the earth and often back in time to better understand nature's powers that modern society may overlook. Young was born July 11, 1949 in Idaho Falls, Idaho, and spent his childhood with his parents and five siblings in a 20 by 30 foot cabin without running water or electricity. Upon graduating from Chalice High School, he struck out to follow his lifelong dream of building a ranch on the Canadian frontier in 1967. He loaded his belongings into a truck and moved to British Columbia, and in 1968 he was granted 320 acres in the Caribou District, part of the last Homestead Act where he began logging. After five years of logging and ranching, Young suffered debilitating injuries in a serious logging accident and was confined to a wheelchair with no expectation of walking again, which caused him to endure years of pain and depression. Channeling the cowboy spirit of not backing down, he began to explore different avenues to better health and well-being, which included the benefits of herbs and good nutrition. It was on this path where Young's personal journey began as he wanted to learn everything he could about natural healing and where he was introduced to essential oils. His determination to achieve physical and emotional well-being combined with his lifelong love of nature drove him to learn everything about essential oils from how they were produced to their wellness benefits. Young's first true introduction to essential oils came when he attended a medical conference in Geneva, Switzerland, where medical doctors were presenting their research on essential oils, and he was enthralled with what he learned and returned to the U.S. with 13 different essential oils to begin his own research. He found the benefits to be astounding and came to the conclusion that this path is what he wanted to pursue. Having grown up farming, it was natural for him to want to learn about growing the plants and producing the oils, which took him to France to study and learn the art of distillation under Mr. Henry Vaillard, the French father of distillation in Provence, France, the lavender capital of the world, and Marcel Espieu the president of the Lavender Growers Association in France for over 20 years. In 1988, two years after I was born, <laughs> Young sold his research center in Baja, California and moved to Reno, Nevada. Hey, that's almost right by Las Vegas where I live, where he began his essential oil business. A year later, he moved his business to Spokane, Washington and began building and marketing a company to expand his teachings about essential oils and their benefits to as many people as possible. That was the origins of present-day Young Living Essential Oils Company. A rancher at heart, he purchased his first farm of 160 acres in May 1992 in the mountains of St. Marie's, Idaho. On his farm, the first lavender, clary sage, thyme, and peppermint were planted and became testing ground for new distillation practices. In 1993, Young's company in Riverton, Utah became Young Living Essential Oils, and in 1994, it was incorporated. He then bought another 160 acres in Mona, Utah in 1995 and started farming in Utah. Young began looking internationally to discover new plants that could be distilled and shared around the world. 
His path took a unique turn when he was invited to develop a natural medicine program and farming project for Eswe University in Cuenca, Ecuador. The climate in Cuenca, only a three month growing season, making it not too conducive for farming. So Gary was exploring in Guayaquil, <laughs> A lot of different interesting names here of cities. Um, a very busy city on the coast. He found the climate and unidentified plants and trees an irresistible opportunity. Young Living became global when it expanded to Ecuador in 2006 with a 2300 acre farm. At the same time, he saw an opportunity to help the local children in the rural community of Changgong on the edge of the jungle and founded the Young Living Academy. The doors opened in March 2008 and to date 340 students have attended with 100% of the students from the first graduating class celebrating their commencement in March 2016. In 2009, Young went to Yemen. After great persistence, he received a permit to go into the Forbidden Zone to visit Shabwa, the ancient throne of Queen Sheba, to see the remains of the ancient civilizations and to see and document the different frankincense and myrrh species still growing in the region. He summarized his experiences in a best-selling historical novel, The One Gift, which depicts life on the camel caravans. It was just one of dozens of books that Young authored and published. While visiting Oman and walking through a market with thousands of giant bags of frankincense resin piled up in the streets, Young decided to build a distillery in Salala, the center of frankincense history. And in January 2010, Young Living opened the first large commercial distillery for the extraction of sacred frankincense essential oil in modern times. While fascinated with the teachings of ancient cultures, Young was also a modern thinker. In 2014, Young Living Highland Flats Distillery became the first automated large capacity computerized steam distilling facility ever built in the world of essential oils. Young Living's operations currently have daily capacity of producing more than 500,000 bottles of oil. The company has international offices in Canada, Australia, Singapore, Japan, Malaysia, the United Kingdom, Ecuador, Mexico, Hong Kong, Indonesia, Taiwan, and the United States. Young Living has more than 16 corporate and partner farms, over 3,000 employees, and well over 4 million members. Young Living Essential Oils will continue to grow and share Gary's vision around the world. Young's research led him to far corners of the earth in unprecedented findings that improve health and wellness, but perhaps the most important role essential oils played in his life was bringing him together with his wife Mary of 25 years. They met at an expo in the Salt Palace in the center of Salt Lake City and married in 1994. The couple have two sons, Jacob and Joseph. Today, Mary continues to serve as CEO of Young Living Essential Oils, which actually Jared Turner has taken over, but the company the couple founded together. And Mary's experience as a network distributing prior to Young Living and her business experience give her an unusual balance of understanding in this amazing essential oil company they built together. They were the perfect match. Mary will continue to carry Gary's vision forward with a unique understanding of her visionary husband and with an extraordinary executive staff who will carry Gary's torch forever. And the funeral is on May 18th which is a Friday in Whispering Springs, uh, Lavender Farm and Distillery, and that was one of Gary's favorite spots in the world. Uh, the farm was located at 3700 Old Highway, 91 Mona, Utah, and then the viewing was held at the farm um, from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. that day. And so definitely my condolences go to the Young family, and as you probably know, you've seen other videos that I've done with doTERRA versus Young Living on Young Living, about the truth of Gary Young and everything else, um, to provide kind of the other side of the coin. And so obviously, you know, the announcement on Young Living's website is going to paint a different picture than everything that's gone on. And I've been reached out by different family members as well to say like, hey, you know, there's other sides of the story that have happened. Gary has other kids, for example. Um, there's other things that happened in the history of Young Living as well as Gary's life that should be you know brought into the light so that you whether you're a young living distributor customer whether you're with doTERRA not with doTERRA whether you're the outside looking in against MLMs with MLMs whatever position you are you at least have both sides of the coin not just a half of one or part of one you get kind of everything and you know some of the people in my other videos have given me flack about hey why are you bringing up dirt why are you doing all this um, that's why I wanted to kind of give this side which is really on the the positive side around something that's very definitely tragic and sad you know I don't I hate to see anyone you know lose their life um, especially due to like strokes and everything um, which 
Um, I know it's a little sensitive to me because my mom had triple bypass surgery. She's still alive, but she's on a number of medications for blood pressure and cholesterol. So definitely taking care of the body as well as eating the right things. I just had a client reach out to me about, hey, how do I reduce my cholesterol? And so you know, there's a whole regimen for that. And so I want to see you know moms, women, men, everyone just be the healthiest versions of themselves. And, you know, that's just aside from any company thing, but from the company standpoint, I do want to be a truth speaker. Um, I do want to seek understanding myself and give information that's fact-based and that people can continue to do their own research regardless of affiliation, regardless of purchase behavior, regardless of all that. It's just, hey, here's the facts. Um, you can obviously research and verify them yourself, but here's the facts whether you like them or agree with them. Um, and I do want to just show both sides of things, right? And so, and I'll have more information in the link in the description below so you can check out my other playlists with Young Living, with doTERRA, doTERRA versus Young Living, all that stuff. Um, and definitely to kind of just continue to get your education on. And I will kind of end with saying that um, I definitely respect Gary's work and all that he did to create Young Living. And I think it's amazing that, you know, distributors and customers are as passionate as they are. And it's also at the same time, you know, cool to see doTERRA kind of come out of that, but take the ball and get it rolling in a different direction as well. Focus on quality, focus on, you know, a lot of other things that maybe they couldn't find with Young Living. But at the same time, both companies, I believe, are still doing good in the world and making a positive impact with regards to pushing the whole, hey, essential oil movement out there. You know, it's an oil revolution. And regardless of what company you're part of um, or not a part of, um, you can still enjoy the benefits and uses of essential oils, whether they're with those companies or with, you know, just a retail-based company or, you know, somebody else's company. So um, hopefully this has kind of given you a little bit more insight as to his life, kind of what he accomplished. But also, I encourage you to check out my other videos and the other playlists so you can kind of get the other side of the coin as well and have a more well-rounded perspective as to kind of everything that's gone on with Young Living and Gary Young as well and really get the truth. Other than that, hit the thumbs up button if you did. Subscribe for future video updates, and I'll see you in the next video.